Whereas intuition can sometimes be seen as a bit a bit woo woo. Oh well, anyway. <laughs> And do we trust it? Do we trust our intuition? I don't know what woo woo is, but it sounds nice. <laughs> well, I like it. Woo -woo -woo. I, do you mean no, it, it's just a bit, you know, you can't pin it down, can you? What is intuition? How do we connect with it? And, and how do we know what it is and when it is intuition? <laughs> We demystify what goes on behind the therapy room door. Join us on this voyage of discovery and co-creative conversations. This is The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors podcast, with Bob Cook and Jackie Jones. So welcome back to the next episode of The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors, with myself and the wonderful Bob Cook. And this is episode 53. We've done over 12 months now, Bob. 53 gosh it zooms along at such a fast pace it does it does <laughs> when it you're does. enjoying yourself jackie that's it you know when you're you enjoying know. yourself time just goes into a time bubble it's like when i'm playing <laughs> it's like when i'm playing chess right now i love chess and it, it, amongst other things chess is the probably the the, the game where time just goes so quickly i don't know where it goes it goes to a time bubble but when you're enjoying yourself time just flies 53 53 yes i believe it and we're getting some lovely comments on the youtube channel as well i've noticed that you're getting some comments on the youtube channel so keep it up and if anybody's got any recommendations for anything that they would like your expertise and your unique take on things then they can just Pop it in the comments there and we'll get around to it. Well, I'm so pleased to hear that people are commenting. I haven't looked for a while and I hope they say nice things or at least questions or curiosity questions. So I'll go on and reply to a lot of these, I think. That would be lovely. I'm sure people would love to hear from you. So tonight's episode is, a. am looking forward to this one, Bob. It's all about the importance of intuition in the therapy room. Wow, that's a good subject. You know, Eric Byrne, the originator of transaction analysis, and of course, what you and I were trained in in our first trainings anyway, um, he wrote a book on intuition in 1957. Did you know that? I didn't. There we are. I was looking for today, and I'm looking up the library here because I put it out and I, I can't see it in the library. But I was looking at it. I, I thought I'd look at it just before before I did this podcast, and hastily didn't. But I did read it about two hundred years ago. Or <laughs> You've got a hell of a memory, Bob. I must say. Seems, seems like it was. Uh, I can't even remember the title. I think the I think the title is Intuition and Ego States, but I'm not quite sure. It might be Intuition in the Mind. But I did briefly read it, and of course, he believes that intuition comes very much from the younger self. Uh, or, or in TA terms, might call the P1, and in layman's terms, let's say the younger self, really young. Um, and he talks a lot about intuition. So intuition is very much at the um, thinking of Eric Byrne. Interesting, isn't it? It is. It is. I wouldn't have thought that would be because it, it's it's a very logical, you know, modality. I think that's why I like it. Whereas intuition can sometimes be seen as a bit a bit woo woo. Oh well, anyway. <laughs> and do we trust it? Do we trust our intuition? I don't know what woo woo is, but it sounds nice. <laughs> well, I like it. Woo -woo -woo. I, do you mean well, it, it's just a bit? You know, you can't pin it down, can you? What is intuition? How do we connect with it, and and how do we know what it is, and when it is intuition? Well, you see, I think that's an interesting question. When do we know when intuition is intuition? Now, I think if you talk to most therapists, and you're, of course, sitting opposite me, so, and you are a therapist, so it will be interesting what you said. But if you talk to most therapists, I think most of them will talk about the importance of sometimes following their intuition in the therapeutic process. So are you one of those therapists that would also say that? Yes, yeah, definitely, yeah. So when would you, and it's interesting this Jack, I've never asked you this question, what, would, what would, do you know what the criteria would be for following your intuition? So in, in other words, what, what would make you follow your intuition? Would you think about clinical 
um, treatment planning or thinking about clinical direction or would you just follow a feeling you've got? What, what, what sort of... I think that would always be in the back of my mind in whatever I'm doing in the therapy room. But often, yeah, I when I was first qualified, I had a plan, I had handouts, I had all this thing, and it was like, in this session, I'm going to do this. Whereas the more experience you get, it's that's where my intuition would come in, is maybe, you know, where it's going in the therapy room, but always having the treatment plan at the back of my mind. Ah, oh, so you're saying that you think intuition is conscious rather than unconscious? Um, Yes, unless there's a feeling with it. If there's a feeling, then I think it's unconscious. If, you know, re I refer to it as like a gut feeling. Then that's emotional and a feeling, and maybe that's unconscious without a conscious thought. Okay. So I think one of the big questions about intuition is, uh, what's the difference between intuition and script? Good question, yes. So for people who perhaps aren't transactional analysts here, would you like to define script or shall I do it? You can do it and I'll chip okay. in. I love scripted stuff. Okay. <laughs> I see script as a... And Byrne, Byrne defined it different ways, but really the major def definition in his last book, he called script an unconscious life plan, yeah. uh, which is originated in you know, early in life and is followed through. Um, and we have our own scripts that we may follow throughout life. Um, so that's why I asked that question. How do we know the difference between intuition and, you know, uh, early script, the, 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 the um, early decisions that we followed early in life? Um, so another question is, you know, in terms of countertransference, people who perhaps, hopefully the therapists listening to this know what countertransference is, but it's your own stuff, in a way, yeah. which has been sort of evoked by the client's stuff so you know if a client's depressed for example and talk about depression and you've got some depression which hasn't been resolved then you could end up um merging with your client in a way because your depression and their depression can get mixed up yeah yeah that would be an example okay so we for example you know you might you know take the client towards cbt because you don't want to deal with the feelings of the depression yourself, for example. So that would be countertransference. So um, sometimes when we think or have a feeling we should go this direction with the client, I think the qu clinical question is really, uh, what's the difference between intuition and countertransference? And if there is any? And how you would determine that? That, that is the question. How would you determine that? Because we do all have our script and our script is in the room with us oh. all the time. <laughs> you see, psychoanalysts going back 120 years ago, Freud, Jung and people like that. Jung did talk a lot about intuition, by the way, but the early you know, analysts, they, they, they would preach for well, nearly all the analytical training is that the therapist keeps out of the relationship and yeah. doesn't share their own you know counter transfers if you want to put it that way around they is stay that possible bob is what possible to stay for the therapist to stay out of the room is that is that doable well as i say before you know i think ego ego psychotherapy in the 1950s if you if you went into a book shop if there was one you know, on psychotherapy, psychoanalysis, the, you know, all the books would be about the importance of the therapist staying outside the relationship and not um, actually talk, talking about their own or sharing their sense of self in the relationship. Analysts tend to make a couple of interpretations most, um, you know, in a 15 minute session. Um, but they aren't really calling that sharing their self. So um, psychoanalysts would talk about once you share yourself in the relationship, you're contaminating the field. Because it's your stuff. Yeah. I, I just don't know how, 
how I would go about doing that. And I suppose I don't understand how you wouldn't understand. <laughs> I, I'm in the room. My script goes wherever I go. It, it's it's part of the course. It's part yeah, of the course. So how can I leave that cool. outside well, the room? Well, on one level, you're correct. At another level, you simply don't share it. Well, yes, yeah. I, I could do the not sharing part of it, but it is still in the room with me. Yeah, and if you don't share it and it stays in your head, then is it going to have any effect on the clinical treatment? Yeah. You think that if you're not sharing what you're thinking and feeling, yeah, by not sharing it, you're saying to me that still has you still have an impact or effect on the treatment. I think so. Maybe not the treatment, maybe the relationship, maybe the therapeutic relationship. Tell me in what way, how? One, I don't overshare in the room, but if it's relevant, I, I would share something. But if if there's something going on for me in my scripted stuff in that room, then my mind's going to be preoccupied with it. It's, it's going to be in the room, whether I want it to or not, to a certain extent. Oh, even if you said to yourself, well, I'm going to ignore that and think about it afterwards. Well, yeah, but in order to ignore something, you've got to focus on it to ignore it, if that makes sense. So, so it's still what, going to... So what you're saying, that... You're saying that by definition, part of you may always be in the um, the therapy room, and by that, you know, to the fact you're preoccupying yourself takes you away from the contact of the client, and then that in itself may contaminate the field. Yeah. Hmm. Well, it's, it's a very I, difficult subject when you look at it that way. <laughs> Well, analysts, I'm going to go about psychoanalysts, they're trained not to uh, act out or preoccupy themselves with their own inner world. They're trained with thinking about interpretation rather than sharing material of the self because, the very, because of contaminating the field and because they may actually be coming from a script or counter script position or a counter transferential position, which actually is nothing to do with the client, but it's to do with them. Yeah, but if we interpret things, that's only our reality of it. So that's therefore, it. are we in the room anyway? Well, I don't come from an, a, a psychoanalytical position because I think the early analysts were coming from a one, almost like an expert position, which I yeah. don't agree with. I mean, yeah. I think that's, that's why I didn't train in psychoanalysis. I trained in a much more sort of egalitarian, I'm okay, you're okay, humanistic position. So, um, but I, I was just thinking in terms of intuition, where we started off with. Yeah. But if we just reactively for, share our feelings without clinical thinking, then we might be coming from a counter-transference place. Yes. Or, or a scripty place, rather than actually what we might think is intuition. Yeah. So I'm I quite surprised at what you said right at the very beginning of this, that, you know, intuition is in P1. The younger self. Yeah. Burn would say. Yeah. Mm. What's surprising about that? I, I, I find that quite surprising. I don't know why, I just do. Well, when, I think you know, I think you, yeah, I think you know this, Jackie. I mean, that the, the, because I'm, I know you know a lot about child development and, uh, but the younger we are, the more likely we are to um, not censor anything, come from a place where we just speak spontaneously. It's just as our critical uh, part of ourselves starts developing, do we actually impinge ourselves. Before that, we're much more likely to come from a much more spontaneous, free position. But as we get older and there's all these critical stuff coming in, we stop ourselves. Yeah. And is that what intuition is? Yeah, some people, well, this is it. This is, well, I suppose, a podcast about what is intuition. Now, is intuition when we free ourselves from the critical parent in, or injunctions that we tell ourselves? Is it when we allow to actually get in touch with what's happening on the inside from an uncluttered, uncontaminated place and are able then? to follow our feelings without censoring ourselves. 
but yeah when you put it that way yeah yeah i suppose i, I don't know that there, there has to be some logical part to intuition to work out what it is trying to tell us well what what do you see intuition as then like a gut feeling or an internal sat nav directing us down a certain route. Yeah, what I believe is that the, the, the very early on we start to, we may follow that spontaneously. And then as we, you know, we get older, you know, two, three, four, five, uh, and we internalize the critical or the uh, belief systems that come from our parents or significant others, we start to inhibit ourselves in terms of following those feelings. But before that, I think we spontaneously quite often just follow our feelings, which often we could call intuition. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we should look up the Oxford English Dictionary definition of what intuition is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's a very important though question because I think a lot of therapists might follow their intuition when actually they're coming from a counter transference or script position. Yeah. They think it's intuition. Yeah. And there's a danger in that, isn't there? Well, counter transference in the therapy room, yeah. Because you're st because you're sharing your own stuff, which actually has nothing to do with the client, really. Yeah. But yeah. you think it's intuition. But in fact, it could be easily have its etiology in script. Yeah. See, I was thinking when we were going to do this podcast and we were starting, I was thinking about past clients and where has intuition played a part for me? And what I came up with, was I can particularly remember one client that was divulging something in the therapy room and I didn't have a reaction to it at all, which is quite unlike me. And to me, that was my intuition saying that something wasn't right about what they were saying. It just didn't fit right. So that's when I was thinking intuition plays out for me in the therapy room. Does that make sense? The example makes sense to me. Um, the query for me would be, is that counter transference? You know, it's like, what's the difference? I don't know. No, I, I, no, I've got this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> I'm just querying it to the listeners, you see. Yeah. Uh, the difference between counter, you know, counter transfers and script and how you would know. You see, I like what you said right at the beginning of this. Well, it seems perhaps there's only 10 minutes now going on. But you said that if there's a feeling attached to it, <clears throat> or there's a feeling and there's not thought processes, you would call that intuition. Once you have the thought processes to the feeling, then you may think about, well, perhaps there's something more around script here. So yeah. I like that, but I like it. And I think it's, we're in a very interesting area. Yeah. Because if we are going to train therapists to follow all their feelings willy and nilly, we're in a dangerous area, aren't we? 100%, yeah. Because to be fair, it depends what day it is of the week as to where your feelings are likely to be. <laughs> <laughs> so what is going to indicate intuition? Surely not linking surely to just feelings. No. You know, and it may be, you might say yes to that. But I just think it's a dangerous ground to give Clark therapists permissions to share their feelings without clinical thought. Yeah. On the sort of back of calling that intuition yeah i suppose i kind of know myself quite well now so i know whether the feeling that i'm having in the room is appropriate to what's going on or if it if it doesn't feel right then to me that's my intuition right so it's backed up by clinical thought then isn't it yeah yeah backed up by uh your own therapy if you like it's backed up in knowing yourself yeah definitely in all those processes yeah 
Yeah. And so I think, you know, one of the, the big things that you, for me as a, a, you know, a therapist is that I do know myself mm. quite well. And I think that's quite important. <laughs> well, thank goodness for that, because if, if you're in the BAC where they don't ask for you to have any of your own therapy, uh, we might be having a different conversation. Yeah. And it's an ongoing process, even now, I, I think you know there's still parts of me that I'm sure that I've not delved deep enough to to explore but yeah I think we have a conundrum with intuition and you hit it anyway when you're saying about logic you know it's a paradoxical if, if we're going to start using logic to explain intuition we're, we're on a paradoxical road yeah yeah that's why I said it's a bit woo-woo, because you can't pin it down. You can't, yeah. <laughs> but you can't really pin transference down, can you? N no, no. Yeah, I think transference is, transference is a very vague term as well. I can explain it clinically, but maybe it's in the land of woo-woo as well. Yeah. Have you ever experienced transference? Well, every minute of the day. I can remember specifically one. No, so I meant it seriously. I meant what I just said. Well, I think yeah. we live in the land of transference a lot. So, you know, Eric Byrne used to say, well, if you're an adult, yeah, then you're not in transference. Well, then the question is, how do we know whether we're an adult or not? And then we could say we're acting appropriate to the age we, you know, age we are, I'm 71, for example. So, okay. But, I th but or stroke and, I think, transference is around or all, all of the time and it doesn't mean i always am um, aware when i'm in transference hopefully uh, i know myself quite well like you i can spot when i'm in transference quicker than than i used to 20 or 30 years ago yeah uh, but i think transference nearly is always around in the clinical domain transference is nearly always there from the moment we open the door to our clients whether we act on it or know that is a different story yeah yeah maybe i don't know myself that well then <laughs> well transference we live in projections don't we yes yes we live all the time in the land of projections and projection is the mechanism of transference yeah i i see when when i think about transference i see it as a i don't know a, a definite emotional response and reaction to it as opposed to just it being transference and counter transference i don't know for me the, the times where i've known i'm in it i've had a real physical emotional reaction to something and that's kind of like oh jesus yeah that's that's what that is so your feelings have given you the clue to that you're not and you hear it now you're in another ego state yeah that this this is my stuff 100 percent. the feelings that i'm getting are definitely mine yeah okay so if we go back to the beginning of the podcast well again i don't think it was the beginning but you said you were surprised that i would put intuition in in the realm of the younger self so where would you put where would you put intuition then I'm not sure. I, when I was saying it, I was I, I thought exactly the same thing. To me, there has to be a certain intelligence to work out that it's intuition. I don't know. The free child, the free spirited without limits and everything else. I don't see that as intuition. I don't know why. So the question is. If you don't see that free, uncluttered, uncontaminated part of ourselves, which is certainly there in our younger self, yeah, as as the um, etiology or the beginnings of intuition, it's like, well, where does intuition arise? Uh, does it? If we use TA in the ego state model, the question would be: Is it You know, is it throughout all our different ego states? Possibly yeah it's 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 a wonderful debate to have i don't know where it would sit whether it would sit in one or or not 
Well, I, I, you have to go to the definition. So if we look at adult ego state, the definition Byrne talk about is that we're in adult, we're in the here and now. Yeah. Both the age we are, acting the age we are. Yeah. So therefore, if we say, does intuition, is it in that part of ourself? I, I would say it could well be in that part, but did it arise from that part of ourself is another story. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. I understand that. Yeah. Is it in parent? No, I don't think parent isn't where I think intuition arises. I, again, I think intuition has its um, etiology in the child, the younger self. Yeah. There's an awful lot of good stuff in the child, to be fair, before the adult takes over and we kind of evolve into where we are. I, you know, I've got a four year old grandson and I love his free spirit and spontaneity and all that sort of stuff. But he's, he's coming up to that age now where he's starting to take notice of his surroundings and conform to certain things. Oh. Well, I was just talking to Richard Erskine. Uh, he rung three minutes before this podcast started. Wow. So I was a bit frustrated because I haven't spoken to him for a long time. Well, I'm it's seeing a name dropping there, Bob. Two and a half, three, three years. Oh, he's coming to our institute in three weeks' time. So. Is he? Yeah, so, uh, but, or stroke and, I was just thinking, you know, that uh, Richard's saying to me quite a few times that some of his best work that he's ever done, uh, this is personal communication, um, has been when he's followed his intuition. Um. Now, we never went further to, to, to have this conversation like we're having in the podcast. Um you know, but where, where does that intuition come from? Uh, but I, I would also say, face safe for myself, when I followed that gut intuition of mine, I've uh, clinically, I'm talking about, um, it's usually had positive results rather than negative results. Um, though I do like to back it up with clinical theory. Yeah. But when I do follow it sometimes, and somebody said, why did you go down that direction? Mostly I can ex explain it clinically. But when it's come from an in intuitive part of myself, uh, you know, I it usually had good results. And I still think that's from a younger part of myself. Yeah. But I haven't had that cluttered parent ego state whirring around. I've managed to shut it off somehow. Yeah. And it does make sense when you're saying it, you know, to, to use your intuition. And that's, you know, there's no critical dialogue going on. It's just taking you down a certain route. Yeah. Well, I think it's taking down a freer route. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I'm absolutely convinced your intuition is in the freer part of ourselves. Yeah. Again, I think it's freer from contaminated material. Energetically, we, we come from much more freer sense of spontaneity. I think that's where intuition arrives, you know, is. Or, 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 or you know, I can't, don't know what Jung would have said about intuition, but I bet he said a lot. Um, and I bet he would talk about that in terms of archetypes and spirits, you know, our, our, our spirit is where intuition arises from. But I do know it doesn't arise, it just doesn't live in the parent ego state. It arises, I think, from a different part of ourselves, the younger side, Whichever part, whether it's this, you know our spirit, whether it's our, you know, our energetic um, side of us, but it's a side which isn't cluttered with the parental interjects. Yeah, yeah, and th there's something about the intent of it as well. I think, you know, yeah. well, to use it with a positive intent in the therapy room. Do you know what I mean? Intuition yeah. to me. Is, is good juicy stuff it's not ever negative it's it's for the good of the client to go down that route with your intuition I think yeah yeah you see you see relational transaction relational transaction analysis which was formed in 2008 even though the etiology of it was earlier but the book relational transaction analysis came out in 2008. Now, if you follow that style of transaction analysis, it's based on using your counter transfers. And it's based on you knowing yourself very, very, very well. And supervision every couple of weeks. Yeah. 
using your sharing your counter transference your sense and self all the time in the relationship now i i'll go back i'm wary of giving training therapists especially beginning therapists to just share their feelings or what they think might be intuition without clinical thinking yeah I'm wary of that because what they might think is intuition and feelings might actually be counter injunction. So the clue would be in knowing yourself very well, I think. Yeah. And that takes time. You I can't mean, learn that. that. That's that's through yeah. years of personal therapy. <laughs> mm, mm. Yeah. Abs absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And I train a lot of therapists over the years, more and more, <clears throat> I when I talking about how come people did what they did in the therapy room, I want to know their clinical thinking. Now, if they just say to me, "Oh, that's just have an intu intuitive feeling," fine. And which part of the self did that come from? Yeah. Would be my next question, because I wanted I want to distinguish between the two. Now, it's not such an easy distinguishing they might just say well i just don't know i felt like it yeah now you know that might might feel strange to what i just said earlier in the podcast that when i've actually followed my intuition i've had positive results but that's that's usually when i've known myself quite well I, it's not beginning it wasn't in my beginning years of therapy no no, and it definitely wasn't with me because, like I said, I used to plan every session. <laughs> I knew I knew what, what I needed to do in the session and everything. There, there was there was a lot of yeah, definitely not intuition going on. In fact, looking back on it, half the time I probably wasn't in the room at all in the early days. I was I was very much focused on what I should be doing and yeah, having yeah, a plan. Well. Yeah. <clears throat> I think intuition is energy free. What I mean by that is it, it lies in the in in the realm of free energy. Yeah. I really believe that. Yeah. I like that. And when it pops up in the room, it's noticeable. It, mm. it you know, it, it yeah. Mm. Often for me, intuition can pop up in the world of meandering yeah <laughs> it, it is it's, it's it's one of those like i said it, it's woo woo it's one of those things that it is difficult to to work out a situation where it would come up or why it comes up because it is quite random it's like an insight yeah you, you can't happen. force an insight they just no you can't force an insight but you see on an exam board you will be deferred no, seriously, that's a serious, seriously, seriously. No, I'm not if, disputing it. If you somebody said I just had an intuitive feeling and I followed that, the next question from anybody on an exam board would be, okay, so tell me your clinical thinking about that. Now, if you know, we had a discussion like this on the exam board, right? And somebody was talking about intuition come from the younger self and all this sort of stuff, we can get to a place where you, they wouldn't necessarily be deferred, but they would need to be able to talk about seeing the difference between counter-injunction script and intuition. Now, if they can talk like that, that shows a clinical nuance, nuance which is pretty advanced. Yeah. If they can't, that means that uh, they could be taking clients down a road, which actually they don't need to get out. Yeah. It's a bit of a minefield then, Bob, isn't it? Well, I, I think the way we're talking now is the way a, per, a person needs to talk when yeah. they're talking about intuition. I mean, a therapist, because they can talk with awareness about uh, counter transfer script and intuition and how challenging the whole process can be. Yeah. Definitely. No, I wish I'd had time to read the book by uh, uh, Eric, Bur Eric Byrne wrote in 1967 on intuition, but I'm sure he would have said it comes from the younger self. Yeah. Without the 
yeah. Clutter. 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 Internal dialogue, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And if we can follow that, I think we can have great results because we're allowing ourselves a freedom, which we often don't allow ourselves. And, and if nothing else, we can model that to our clients who are so usually full of full of contaminations and clutteredness, they don't allow themselves to have that free energy. Yeah. What a wonderful podcast, Bob. It's an interesting one, isn't it? It is, it is. There's a lot of food for thought there for me. I'm I, yeah, it, it needs to simmer a bit, I think. It's it's been a wonderful topic. Yeah, and if we ask the transpersonal psychotherapist, I'm sure they'd have a, many different ideas and thoughts about where um, intuition resides. Maybe they're saying the spiritual dimension of ourselves, but certainly not on the parent. I can absolutely say that. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, did that takes us down a whole different road about spirituality in the therapy room maybe that's one that we should do at some point i'm sure it's on our list somewhere it quite possibly is yeah yeah um so on that note bob we will be back for the next episode which i think kind of leads on quite nicely from this month because we're going to be looking at understanding emotional triggers and why this is important in the therapy process Yes, it's what you've just talked about, the emotional triggers, it's so important to understand that. Yeah. So I look forward to talking about that. Okie dokie. Until next time, Bob. Thank you, Jackie. See you soon. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. We'll be back next week with another episode.